Hey, good morning. Welcome to Exodus chapter 17 now in the first four verses. We want water from the rock. So let's see how that goes. We'll read it here. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin, according to the command of the Lord, encamped at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and they grumbled against Moses and said, Why now have you brought us up from Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What shall I do to this people? A little more, and they will stone me. So this isn't anything new, is it? We've seen this repeatedly back in chapter 15 and in chapter 16, and and I, I guess before that, the people moaning, and but, but here we have a different word, uh, in and it says now they're quarreling with. They're not just moaning and groaning and complaining. This is a little bit stronger. And so, yeah, they are um, on the same line. Oh, we're all thirsty and hungry again. Now, it's interesting, Moses is careful here when he's warning them back. He says, yeah, you're quarreling with me, but what? Actually, you're testing the Lord. You're testing the Lord. Now, there are some places in the Bible where the Lord says, test me. Malachi 3 is an example we've probably all heard, right? Test me and see, you know, go ahead and return tithe to me. See if I will not pour out a blessing that's too big that you won't hardly be able to, you know, find room for my blessing. So there are some places where God says, test me, but many times... It's testing God. There's a there's a negative line there. There's something that we shouldn't be doing. We should be actually instead exercising faith. By now, I mean, look at this generation's gone through the. Uh, they've been delivered from Egypt uh, through the. They've gone through the ten last the ten plagues. They are uh, on their way here. They ran out of water. God gave them water. They ran out of. Now they've got food. Uh, you know, th it's not like this is an un uh, untested thing. You know, God has shown again and again, you know, the people moan and complain, and God, you know, here's your free food. Yeah, moan and complain, here's your free uh, uh, water. And so, <laughs> uh, but here they are at it again, and uh, they're back at it again. So there's no water, and they are uh, very unhappy. Give us water. Give us water. Like Moses, is Moses in charge of the waterworks of Sinai? Because Rephidim, now they're pretty close to Sinai. Sinai's coming up pretty soon here. And they've gone out into the wilderness a ways here. So, yeah, not so much water in Rephidim and very, very, uh, very antagonistic. And, you know, <clears throat> the devil must have known also something. He might have, the devil might have had some clue here. Uh, we're not really shown why, but, uh, of course, he's, he's looking to get the trouble, people trouble moaning and complaining all along wherever we are. But if they're going to get received the, the Ten Commandments up here just coming up, uh, not so far from here, maybe there's some way the devil sort of anticipated that and he's trying his best to get under their skin and, and destroy this whole operation. Anyway, Moses is at his wit's end. He doesn't know what to do. And he says, Lord, they're about ready to stone me. What, you know, what can I, what can we do now? So I think that's really kind of the interesting question to me right here is the difference, the issue of testing the Lord in an inappropriate way or an improper way versus exercising faith. And God is always trying to grow our faith, but uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way in which we can test the Lord in the right way, you know, prove him and see what he will do. And there's another way which is really quite improper, which is quite presumptuous and quite antagonistic. Uh, what do they say to Moses here? Didn't you bring us just out here, you know, to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? I mean, Moses isn't such just such a bad guy that, you know, he's he's out there to kill them. He's going to kill their livestock. He's going to kill their puppies. Now, maybe they don't have puppies, but you get the idea here. They're going to kill our livestock with thirst. Why would they accuse him of that? But it's not a new accusation, is it? So Moses turns to the Lord here. I'm not sure what to do. They're about ready to stone me. Uh, where do we go from here? And so uh, a warning for us. Do we, are we exercising faith to God or are we sometimes inappropriately testing him? Are we provoking him? Like we are unjustified in our provocation because this, this is an unjustified provocation. God didn't deliver them and bring them along all this period just so they could all die in the desert and kill all their animals in the desert. 
That's not, that's not the plan. So God has obviously a clearer or better plan than this. And the people, though, they have this very narrow vision. And now they're actually moaning and quarreling and griping and, and <clears throat> yeah, looking around. So here's the challenge and a challenge for us to think about. Are we uh, exercising faith or are we sometimes in the negative sense testing the Lord like, uh, really provoking him to his face when there's no, nothing there except guilt or condemnation on our part because we're wrong. These people are wrong. So, yeah, Moses is at the end here, and so he turns to God. They're about ready to stone me. What should we do next? So we'll look at that tomorrow morning. See what happens next. God bless you. <laughs>